Foods, Big T here, and perhaps it's time we all forgive Ubisoft. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's about that time, guys. The Wii U was a rough period for many Nintendo fans, and there were many disappointments, and there was a lot of bombarding of, uh, you know, just bad situations uh, when it came to uh, third parties especially and uh, Nintendo themselves uh, to a degree with the first party games well, a lot of Nintendo fans really got upset including myself with Ubisoft with the uh, Rayman uh, Legends debacle if you don't remember I'm sure most of you do uh, Rayman Legends uh, came out or was supposed to come out and I believe March of 2013 uh, it was it started off as a, a Wii U um, exclusive, and uh, that just changed. <laughs> and uh, it was supposed to come out, I believe, in March. And the game was ready to go. The developers um, were, you know, excited. And Ubisoft decided to hold on to the game, even though it was finished. For uh, at least the Wii U version was finished uh, because. I, we don't really know. I guess there was some clause maybe on the Xbox side that said games had to come out day and date. There was a lot of talk about that. I don't really know or remember what the real reason was, if we even got the real reason. Uh, but uh, I, it was just, I don't think it was so much Ubisoft's fault as it was the timing of that and the nature of it. Uh, Nintendo fans were, you know getting disappointing news from third parties. There was a lot of bad talk. Uh, people talking out the side of their neck when it came to Nintendo and the Wii U. And uh, Ubisoft just happened to just, you know, do this, you know, thing with Rayman Legends at the time, which was very upsetting. Uh, and uh, a lot of people just got pissed off and uh, Ubisoft bore the brunt of Nintendo fan frustration. If you look historically, uh, they probably didn't deserve that. Um, and I'm not saying you should retroactively not be happy <laughs> about what they did with specifically Rayman Legends, but I think uh, everything kind of snowballed from there and people just got upset about Ubisoft. Uh, probably more than we should have because uh, they were there on the N64, which is, you know, which was hard for a lot of third parties to do. Um, and they had some games, uh, Rayman, again, Rayman 2, The Great Escape was one of them. Uh, there was a bunch of other games I can't think of right now uh, that have Ubisoft uh, as a publisher and maybe developer here and there. But uh, GameCube especially, Ubisoft, was a huge supporter, and uh, they brought the games. Um, one of my favorite series uh, is the Splinter Cell series. Um, I talked about it before that I, uh, to me, there was kind of this... Uh, unspoken competition between Splinter Cell and uh, Metal Gear, and I preferred Splinter Cell, you know, because they were both kind of stealth action games. Uh, I preferred Splinter Cell a lot more uh, to to Metal Gear, and uh, that whole series was there. Uh, it played beautifully; so it worked really well on GameCube, and then you know, there's various other titles that we saw brought. Um, on GameCube and uh, on Wii as well, you know, the, they obviously had the Rev, uh, Raving Rabbit series, which I didn't really care for, but they brought many other games um, that I did. Uh, one big series being No More Heroes. So Ubisoft um, supported, you know, Nintendo for a while, and and with the Wii U as well, they brought, you know, they brought a lot of their games. Some of the games were late. Um, like Watch Dogs was really late, and we were upset about the fact that they didn't use the gamepad. I'm still upset about that because you know there was a lot of talk. There was a lot of talk on the Wii U, like we're doing this. We love the gamepad, and there was just talk. Nobody was actually <laughs> doing anything. Remember the aliens, Colonial Marines crap? <laughs> uh, yeah, so that was awful. Uh, so, and I was really excited for that because I wanted to have that, you know. The, that locator, you know, from Aliens uh, the, that the Marines had on my gamepad, that just would have been so cool. And, you know, stuff like that just started happening. And Ubisoft did the same thing with Watch Dogs. 
Uh, we all had these dreams and visions of how cool it would be to be able to hack on the second screen, to have the map and all that stuff, and none of that came to fruition. Actually, the best game, uh, uh, including Nintendo games, that showed up on the uh, the Wii U to use the gamepad was Deus Ex Human Revolution Director's Cut. That is the best use of the gamepad on the Wii U as far as I'm concerned. So uh, that didn't even include like Splatoon, which I love Splatoon and you know being able to squid jump and squid jump, squid jump. I still can't say it. Squid jump to your teammates and whatnot. Um, and uh, yeah, so. Ubisoft really, I feel, supported it. We had, you know, we didn't have all the bells and whistles, DLC and whatnot, for uh, for the Switch when it came to, or Switch, look at me, for the Wii U when it came to, like, Assassin's Creed and things like that. Um, I think even Watch Dogs, I, I didn't really pay a lot of attention to it, so I don't really know. But we, you know, they still support it. Um, and I'm sure it was a tough situation. And at the time, well, you know, we... On Nintendo fans, we couldn't see um, what you know developers and whatnot were dealing with when it came to Wii U because you know the different architecture, the CPUs were slow. Um, you had to do you know special things to get them, you know, to get them to perform the way Nintendo could. And you know, Nintendo, from all counts, wasn't there. Uh, the development kits were kind of wonky, and Nintendo wasn't there for support right away. And so. You know, a lot of this blame goes to them, and you know, even through most of that, uh, Ubisoft supported uh, Wii U with a uh, big game. You know, their big titles um, like uh, Assassin's Creed, and, and like I said, Watch Dogs came late. You know, Rayman Legends, and you know, there was various other titles that they brought. But I just think, um, out of all of the third-party developers, at least Western third-party developers. Ubisoft has been one of the tightest, uh, best partners uh, when it comes to Nintendo hardware. But certainly better than EA or Activision, and uh, you know any of the other guys. And you know they're bringing a really cool title that I didn't think I wanted <laughs> with Rayman or with a uh, Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Um, when I heard the idea, I was like, this is stupid, this can't be true, this is when it was just a rumor, and uh, this is a terrible idea when I found out uh, what it was, fell in love with it, so, you know, they're bringing that, they're bringing that, uh, I can't remember that space game that uses like, uh, it's kind of like um, uh, Toys of Life or whatever, that looks pretty cool actually, that looks like something I could actually get into. Um, I believe, you know, it has been confirmed that Beyond Good and Evil is going to show, but I believe it will. And uh, I'll actually explain in another video uh, why the power and the, you know, the limitations of the Switch uh, shouldn't stop uh, that game from coming. And I'll have some pretty good examples of that, so stay tuned for that. But, you know, we got some cool stuff from Ubisoft on, on Wii U. And... Uh, you know, they stayed as long as they could. They stayed longer pretty much than anybody else uh, as far as third party goes. So they were, you know, especially those first couple of years, they were consistent. They brought their games. So you can't really complain uh, too much with them. They just didn't have the, the ability to stick around. And I think, you know, Nintendo was talking to Ubisoft in the background saying, you know, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's okay if you don't bring more games, the titles aren't selling that well. And you know, there were various reasons why, because you know the games didn't perform as well as even the 360 and PS3 versions of the game. And like I said, that had to do with the architecture, not the power. And uh, I'm gonna touch, like I said, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna touch on that in a different video, uh, as I mentioned earlier. So, you know, stay tuned for that anyway. But yeah, I just think uh, Ubisoft, you know, especially with the Switch selling so well, you will see pretty good Ubisoft support. I think they're going to be one of the best, if not the best, Western uh, partners as far as the Switch goes, as far as getting uh, third-party games. So I'm over it. Um, you know, I still don't want to see Rayman in Smash, though. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I don't. I'm not sure if I'd mind at this point. Uh, but 
yeah, let me know what you guys think. Are you still salty as I was and as a lot of Nintendo fans were about Rayman and about Ubisoft in general? Or have you welcomed them back? You know, they look like they're doing pretty good things with the Switch in the way of uh, the Rabbids game and uh, other titles coming. I think there's at least four or five Ubisoft titles coming that I haven't played. I haven't played Steep. Um, which I'm I'm actually kind of looking forward to. I haven't played a snowboarding game in forever, and I do like snowboarding games. I have a bunch of them. And uh, they're bringing some other titles. Oh, Rayman, uh, Definitive Edition. Uh, I feel like I already have the Definitive Edition on Wii U, so probably going to pass on that, uh, at least for full price. Maybe I'll pick it up later for the collection or something. But um, definitely getting Rabbits, uh, uh, Mario and Rabbits Kingdom Battle. So, yeah, I'm... I'm pretty much over it <laughs> at this point. But uh, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below, as always. Thank you for watching and listening, and I'll see you fools next time. Peace out. Oh, yeah. One more thing. Play Nintendo, fools.